Hi everyone, and welcome back to Journeyology and Decoding Your Y-DNA, a series about how Y-DNA testing can help us explore our paternal lines. My name is Jeremy Lehman, and I am a genealogist who loves weaving DNA into family history research. In this video, we'll be diving in how to understand your big Y block tree. The big Y block tree is arguably the most important result that you receive when taking a big Y test. That is because the big Y block tree situates your branch in the tree of mankind and shows you your closest Y DNA matches who have also taken a big Y test. While the block tree is full of important information, it also can be difficult to navigate. Here are a few steps I usually take when I encounter a new big Y block tree. Number one, get your bearings. Find your terminal haplogroup and use the discover tool to date this connection. Note the tester or group of testers who share this terminal haplogroup with you. They are your closest matches. Number two, Date your upstream haplogroups by referencing Family Tree DNA's Discover tool. Number three, figure out connections. Determine when you connect to other testers' branches on the big Y tree, and also when they connect with each other. And number four, add context. Incorporate additional information to better understand your block tree results. Let's see how this works with my own big Y block tree. First, it's important to get our bearings when we look at the big Y block tree. The big Y tree provides a visualization of your haplogroups, along with the haplogroups of your closest big Y matches by showing their nested structure. As we look from top to bottom, we go from haplogroups that are further back in time that are shared by a lot of testers to downstream subclads, designating mutations that emerged closer to the present day and that are carried by fewer testers. The visualization makes these downstream haplogroups look like branches on a family tree, and the upstream haplogroups indicate a common paternal line ancestor shared between big Y matches. I always recommend starting with your own branch. Remember that your terminal haplogroup is the most recent mutation or group of mutations that you share with other testers, and it represents your closest connection with other big Y testers. On the big Y block tree, your own terminal haplogroup will be highlighted in a black box to help distinguish it from other branches. My terminal haplogroup of GFT37500 is one of six shared mutations that represent my terminal haplogroup. Family Tree DNA chose one mutation, GFT37500, to represent the six mutations in total when listing the terminal haplogroup. Once you locate your terminal haplogroup on the block tree, you will want to assign a date to it. This date corresponds to the time when you first share a common paternal line ancestor with your other DNA matches who share your terminal haplogroup. Unfortunately, this information is not currently found in the block tree itself. Instead, head over to Family Tree DNA's Discover tool. There, you can see that my terminal haplogroup GFT37500 has been assigned a date of 1700 CE. This means that any other testers who are, are a part of GFT37500 share a most recent common ancestor with me from around 300 years ago. Keep in mind though that this date is just an estimate. By looking at the Y-DNA time tree on Discover, you can see the confidence bars that will give a wider range for the dating of your terminal haplogroup. 
Once you have the date of your terminal haplogroup, head on over back to the big Y block tree and take note of the names of the other testers who share your haplogroup. The block tree will show your matches names, but in this video, I have hidden this information in order to preserve their anonymity. In my big Y tree, there is just one other tester who shares the six mutations with me. And he happens to share my layman surname. This is an exciting result, but it's not always the case that you'll get this lucky. The result depicted here was actually the product of years of research. I had target tested this individual who I had believed was a distant layman cousin of mine. The traditional documentation suggested that the two of us shared a common layman ancestor born in 1791. And fortunately, Big Y testing confirmed that we are indeed from the same layman family. Because we have traditional documentation to support this Big Y connection, we can actually refine our dating for the GFT37500 terminal haplogroup. We can say with certainty that these six mutations that define my terminal haplogroup must have arisen in my line by 1791, which is the year our most recent common layman ancestor was born. Family Tree DNA's estimate of 1700 is not too far off. Step two, once you explore your own terminal haplogroup, you will then want to date the upstream haplogroups that you also belong to. These represent connections to big Y testers further back in time. For this, I recommend going back to Discover and clicking on the Ancestral Path page which neatly presents the dating of your upstream haplogroups. You can see for me that GFTA 54806 dates to 1250 CE. GZ45086 dates to 1100 CE. And GFTC82799 dates to 950 CE. You can then assign these dates to your big Y tree. Step three, figure out connections. Once you date your upstream haplogroups, you can determine when you connect to your matches on the big Y tree. For instance, my next closest match, whose paternal line is from Northern Italy, shares the GFTA 54806 mutation with me that dates to 1250 CE. This means that I share a common paternal line ancestor with this tester from approximately 750 years ago, which is quite a long time ago. This result makes sense intuitively because between 1250 CE and my terminal haplogroup of 1791 CE, six different mutations emerged. Remember, one mutation typically arises every 50 to 150 years. And so hundreds of years must have passed for the six different mutations to have emerged in my own line. Since I connect with this tester from such a long time ago, it is unlikely that I will find a genealogical connection to this match. This result is not uncommon. To find big Y matches within a genealogical time frame, you oftentimes will need to target test and find those testers yourselves. You can then figure out the dating of connections to the other branches found on your tree. You can see that there are some groups of matches that I connect with from 1100 CE and others from 950 CE. I also recommend seeing how these testers connect with each other. For example, there is a group of three testers that are part of the terminal haplogroup GFTA52087. This haplogroup dates to approximately 1650 CE, which means that all three testers share a most recent common paternal line ancestor from around that time. Interestingly, two of the three testers share a common surname. 
So it is possible that they may be able to figure out how they are connected to each other. I connect with these testers through a shared haplogroup dating all the way back to 1100 CE. So it is less likely that I will figure out how I am personally connected with them. Step four, add context. My final recommendation for exploring your big Y tree is to seek out additional resources to contextualize your results. This can be done by joining group projects or connecting with other testers so you can learn more about your line. Through connecting with experts, I was able to learn that my upstream haplogroup of GBY764 that arose around 800 CE is one of the largest Ashkenazi Jewish branches in existence today. Like other large Ashkenazi branches found in the modern population, GBY764's downstream subclads are characterized by a star-shaped phylogeny, which marks periods of time in which there was a very rapid demographic expansion stemming from a common male ancestor. In my line, this expansion of descendants occurred in the late first millennia, shortly after the formation of the earliest Ashkenazi Jewish communities in Europe. For Jews of Eastern European paternal ancestry, you oftentimes will see a second period of demographic expansion dating to around the 14th century, which approximates to the rapid growth in the Jewish community that occurred there following the Black Plague. In these lines, you will see the emergence of many new haplogroups over a short period of time, dating back to the 1300s and 1400s, with each leading to distinct branches of living testers today. The fact that you do not see this in my line, as most of my big Y connections date from before the Black Plague, provides support for the theory that my paternal ancestry likely always had been in Western Europe, where the Jewish population growth was smaller than in Eastern Europe. We covered a lot of ground in this video. Hopefully you now have a better idea of how to navigate your own big Y tree. Start with your own branch and your closest matches and work your way back in time, dating your connections to more distant big Y matches. And don't forget to layer in additional context so that you can make the most of your results. What has your experience been like using the Big Y block tree? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe. Let's keep decoding your YDNA together.